Welcome back to our series of Proofpoint and Cloud Archiving Technologies. This is our sixth and last session, and what we're going to explore today is the topic of social media. Obviously, a brand new topic in the last few years, but a topic that's taken up with tremendous force and velocity. And we're going to discuss how that impacts archiving and vice versa. Specifically, what we're going to talk about is two main areas. First of all, the accessibility of this data. How important is it to be able to access social media data from a legal perspective? And then we're going to talk about compliance and what are the requirements around uh, managing and supervising social media as it relates to compliance, specifically around certain regulations such as FINRA. So let's get started. Uh, the backdrop of this is, is obvious probably to most of you. Social media is being used in a tremendous amount. There are over 500 million Facebook users today, 100 million uh, visitors per month to twi Twitter with over 90 million tweets per day. And LinkedIn is also has over 70 million users that were added um, in over 200 countries. So there's a tremendous amount of use. And that's really from a consumer angle. All of organizations, employees, citizens, and people at home are using all of these social media um, solutions to communicate and interact with each other. However, equally importantly, organizations themselves are becoming social media personas. And we find a large amount of organizations are using Twitter, Facebook, um, and LinkedIn to promote their goods, to communicate with their customers, and, and to be part of that fabric as well. So there's really two parts to this equation. One is, how is your organization using social media and what are the requirements around that? And how are your users using social media and what are the requirements around that? And these two can be very blurry lines in that many times an employee of yours, for example, a salesperson may be using LinkedIn, their personal LinkedIn account, to communicate with prospects about business work. So it's very blurry lines and organizations are trying to understand how to cope with this. The first step, obviously, to coping with it is putting policy in place. And what's interesting is a Osterman research study done earlier this year has found that 40% of organizations have no policy across these different social media categories. And so this is something that organizations are catching up with and need to catch up with putting a policy in place. And in fact, another 40% have just a very basic policy in place. Uh, and only 20% then have a real strong policy in place. So one point to think about of your organization is, do you have a policy in place? And if you do, is it comprehensive and strong? And does it actually cover the use cases that we have talked about, both as a business and as individuals, and individuals using social media uh, to communicate for their businesses? Uh, this is clearly one takeaway, is that you need to think about where your organization is and put in place policies to help your users understand how they are supposed to use social media and then use that as a basis to determine what technology you need to put in place to enforce those policies. So that's really thought number one. Now as we talk about legal terms, the big question is my users are using social media, we're using social media, what are the legal implications of that? And I think we, there's been clear precedence that has been set that anything that is communicated over social media is not necessarily private nor privileged and could be discovered. A couple of examples, the U.S. Department of Justice versus WikiLeaks, obviously a, a very high profile case. The U.S. Department of Justice uh, had subpoenaed data from Twitter to gain access to their content. So first of all, there is a notion here that the DOJ is able to gain access to content on Twitter to help uh, their case. But more interestingly, Twitter um, then and described to the DOJ that because of their policy that they have to their users that they must disclose any subpoenas or requests for information, they could not abide by the gag rule that the DOJ wanted to put in place uh, and it basically have Twitter keep it secret that they are doing this uh, subpoena. And so uh, an interesting point here as well is that you should, as a user of these services, pay attention to what the policies are and are they going to or not communicate information to you about subpoenas and other discovery requests. And so a very important thing to think about parenthetically. There's also a number of additional cases you can see on the slide that describe other cases in which the courts compelled either the defendant or the plaintiff to produce access to social media to gather evidence. And so in essence, uh, social media is deemed to not have a, quote, social media privilege. It is not private and can be discovered. And courts are uh, supporting the notion that this is electronically stored information and could be accessed. So it's very important for you as a business to think of what are my policies that we've talked about around social media and what is the discoverability for this content. And know that you may be compelled by court to have your employees, your customers, uh, or yourself as an organization provide usernames and passwords to social media accounts to gather this information.
Now, from a regulatory point of view, the most obvious uh, case in point is around the SEC and FINRA regulations that require the supervision, monitoring, and archiving of electronic communications between, for example, broker-dealers and the clients. Now, a lot of broker-dealers and a lot of uh, folks in the insurance industry and other financial services want to use social media as a marketing tool and as a sales tool to communicate with potential clients. And there's huge value in doing so and strong business reasons to do so. But what has been very clearly stated in the FINRA Rule um, 1006 is that it is a requirement to provide the same level of archiving and supervision that you would on those social media communications as you would on email. So if you are in financial services, extremely important to either have policies in place that so say the users cannot use social media to communicate, and if you do allow them to communicate, put in place technologies to allow you to archive and monitor this content. Now one interesting thing to, to think about here as well, Proofpoint recently did a, a survey and 18% of respondents said that they have do not allow the users to use social media. However, 64% of those surveyed suspect that the users do anyway. And so it's also important to realize if you're not allowing your employees, um, your broker dealers, etc., to uh, use social media, is that really the case? Are they really abiding by the policy? So you need to make sure you have a policy in place, you're monitoring the adherence with that policy, but more importantly, probably allow social media to occur. It has huge business value, but make sure you have technology in place to monitor, uh, supervise, as w and archive that content. Now, the way that works with Proofpoint, and if you've attended earlier sessions in the series, you will know um, about the Proofpoint uh, implementation where we have a hybrid deployment where all of our archiving, search, and storage infrastructure is managed in the cloud for low cost of ownership, but we have an appliance on premise that allows us to capture the content and encrypt it before it's sent to the cloud. The way we interact now with social media is we're able to integrate with different tools to capture social media posts, social media communications, and then funnel those through that appliance, have them be encrypted and stored in our cloud. Now we basically treat that content as if it was an email message and you're able to put in place equivalent supervision and uh, policies and practices as well as retention policies for all that content to make sure you adhere with SEC and FINRA regulations. Very easy integration, something to think about if you are a Proofpoint customer. So, key takeaways. Obviously, social media is here to stay. It's not going away. You really need to think about how you cover social media as part of your information governance plan. How do you address the security, the privacy, the regulatory and legal impact of this new form of communication? And be proactive before it becomes a problem. We know that your users are using social media. There's no doubt about that. Are they using it for business? And make sure you get ahead of that curve. If you're a bank or financial services organization that is governed by regulations that requires you to monitor and archive this content, you need to do something about this immediately because chances are your users are doing it and you need to do something about it. And as part of all of this, investigate the technologies that allow, us, allow you to put in place uh, social media monitoring and filtering and compliance, but tie it to your IT fabric so it's not yet another solution. You can leverage the same tools you may already have in place around monitoring, around archiving, around supervision to do this. Don't think of putting in separate technology. So to wrap up the series and to wrap up this presentation, a quick overview on who Proofpoint is. Proofpoint is a leading provider of email security, compliance, and archiving solutions for mid to large organizations. In fact, many of the world's largest organizations leverage Proofpoint to help protect their messaging, email, and communication streams. Uh, there's really four main product areas that you can look at from Proofpoint. Proofpoint Enterprise Protection looks at your inbound communications uh, and monitors and blocks spam, viruses, malware, phishing attacks, and other threats that may be coming in from outside your organization. Proofpoint Enterprise Privacy looks at outbound communications and helps you implement policy to ensure the protection of your private and confidential information. Whether you want to block that, you want to quarantine it, you want to allow your users to ensure that that data was supposed to leave, or you may want to use Proofpoint Encryption to encrypt the data. Still allow it to be sent, still allow communication to happen, but do so in a secure way. And of course, Proofpoint Enterprise Archive, the solution we've been talking about, provides a very secure cloud-based solution for email archiving. With that, we'll wrap up our series on Proofpoint um, and email archiving in the cloud and wrap up the session. Thanks so much for your time.